Hello, welcome to today's episode of the Open Levels Daily Devotional. I am Adele Kombolanle, and on today's episode, March 30, year 2024, the topic of our Open Heaven is, He did it all for you. Let us pray. Father Lord, we say thank you for your word today. Thank you for speaking to us. We believe that wherever one or two are gathered, you are always there with us. Father, thank you because as we go into your word today, your word will open our hearts and it will reveal your truth to us. Thank you, Jesus, because you've answered. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So our memory verse is taken from Hebrews chapter 9 verse 26. And it says, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the hand of the world, as he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26. And I'll take it again. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the hand of the world, as he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26. And a Bible passage is taken from Matthew chapter 26 from verse 37 to 45. I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and wait with me. And he went a little further and fell on, the f- on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not wait with me one hour? Watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the ends of sinners. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us go into the open heavens as we see by our Father in the Lord. Jesus knows the end from the beginning, so he knew that he knew that what was going to happen to him on the cross would be very terrible. This made him pray in Matthew 26 verse 39, saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. The Bible recorded that while he was saying this prayer, a sweat was like blood. This tells us that he took that prayer very seriously. Yet, Jesus still decided to go through with the suffering. Jesus did not lay down his life out of compulsion. He said clearly in John 10, 18, that he laid down his life willingly. The statement is heavy and it made me ask, what kind of love will make a man surrender himself to be humiliated and slaughtered like this? I saw the perfect answer to my question in John 15 verse 13, which says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. This is the greatest kind of love in the world. Jesus loves you more than anyone in the world can ever love you. He showed it by laying down his life for you. Again, I ask myself, what will make a man surrender his life like this? I saw the answer to this question in John chapter 10 from verse 11 to 12, 
The good shepherd never deserts the sheep. When he sees a wolf coming, he stays and protects the sheep from being devoured because of the love he has for the sheep. The devil is the wolf that tries to steal, kill, and destroy. Why Jesus is the good shepherd that laid down his life for you to have eternal life. Jesus is the only genuine protection you can get from the claws of the wolf, the devil. If you believe in him and surrender your life to him, the wolf will have no power over you because Jesus has already died for you. The wolf, however, is free to devour anyone that is not following Jesus or believers that stray away from him. Beloved, if you don't want to be a prey to the devil, give your life to Jesus Christ now. Commit to him, following him and him alone. He paid the ultimate price for you and he is the only one that can lead you into everlasting life. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word this morning. The Bible says that his, the entrance of his word bringeth light and understand, understanding to the simple. Thank you for your word, Jesus. This word is really timely. Like many of the open levels that we've been doing recently, I've, I kept saying the word that these words are timely words. They are timely words. We are in the end time. And today, our Father and the Lord is reminding us again that Jesus did it for you, part two. He did it for you, part two. That's the continuation of what we said yesterday. Yesterday, we established the fact that the death of Jesus has brought so many things for you, for us, for me, and for you. So today, we are establishing the fact that Jesus died for you, and he died for me. There is no love that compared to the love that God has for us, that Jesus has for us. The love that is so strong that he he willingly gave himself to die. Not just that, when I reflect on it, he knew he was going to die. He knew it was not just a death that he just shoot somebody and he dies instantly. It is a death that comes with suffering and with pain. From the beginning, it was lied on. That's the process. Lied against rather. And he was condemned to death without sin. He did not sin, but he was condemned to death. Then from there, he was beaten for a sin he never even committed. And when I watched the movie Passion of the Christ, the beatings, the severity of the torture is something that whenever I remember, it sends chills down my spines. So it was beaten. It was given so many, like he went through so many things. When he was thirsty on the cross, he was also given a sour drink. That is vinegar. That's very sour. And he was given something like that, and he couldn't even drink it. And then the thieves, by his left and his right, one accused while the other vindicated him. And then he looked at his mother, the person that gave him life like the physical human form and told john this is your mother from now looking at her that he has to leave her he has to leave her without without being able to do anything for her anymore and then he went on to even look up and say god you are forsaking me you left me this is the cross i am here i can't even see you you are not there for me and I imagine the anguish and the pain he felt at that point when he realized that even God is not there for me at this point. So that is what Jesus did for you. And why did he do it for you and for me? Because he wants us to have eternal life and salvation. So the question from our open heaven today is just, have you received the salvation of Christ? Are you born again? Are you genuinely born again? In fact, we shouldn't be saying the word genuinely born again anymore. Because it should be, if it's either you are born again or you are not born again. So we're asking ourselves today, are you born again? Have you received the light of Christ? It is that light that shines forth in darkness that darkness cannot overcome. If you don't come into that light, then you are in darkness. And darkness can overcome you and overshadow you at any time. And then you become lost. 
And that is the place of the devil. The devil walks in darkness. He cannot overcome light. Neither can he come into the light. So I'm calling us today from our word today that accept Jesus. Accept Jesus. Accept the salvation of Christ. And even right there where you are, can you just confess your sins and say, God, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins to you. I accept you into my life. The Bible says that on with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. It is our mouth that we use to confess salvation. It is not something you assume. Confess it today and say, Jesus, I accept you into my life. I say, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. I say that you are Jesus to me. You are my Redeemer. You are my Savior. Come into my life. I surrender my life to you. I say that I am dying. I have made my life to you at your altar. Do with me what you ever you please to do. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So a Bible in one year is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 28 to 31. And a hymn for today is Rock of Ages, cleft for me. A key point says, Only those who are in the flock of the good shepherd are safe from the claw of the wolf. I pray that the Lord will bless us, He will redeem us, and He will grant us this grace to abound in His presence at all times in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe comment to like and share this episode with your friends and family if you have someone who is not born again please share this episode with them and allow the word of god to touch their hearts i pray that god helps us and grace us have a blessed day god bless you